Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. And we're going to try and do this, well, no, we're going to do it if everything goes well, starting today. We're, I'm starting to lay out different, different video sequences. Sunday, I'm going to focus on spirituality. Regardless of what your upbringing is, regardless of where you stand in life right now, if you go to a theological church, like to one of the regular mainstream religions, if you're Wiccan, if you're Buddhist, it doesn't matter. Okay, if you're if you've got your own belief structure, doesn't matter what you call it. Okay, you're all welcome. Now, this being said, I do hope that we warrant a a thumbs up. And please subscribe to the to the channel as there's a lot of information going to come up over the next little while. We're just starting to get rolling, so I mean we've been doing this for a while, but very haphazard at best. We're doing our best to get organized. Now, regardless of who you look to as a higher power, or for that matter, if you look to yourself, doesn't matter. Okay. There are lots of ways of looking at the world and lots of different ways of, of talking about it. For every individual person, there is a different way. Now, you may be similar in other people, and there is something to be said about gathering with people of a like-minded view. So for those of you that go to a church or to a regular temple on a regular basis, or for those of you that gather in a, in a coven, a.k.a. a witch's circle, all of you are welcome. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow any one of your own of your own paths. What I'm talking about today and what I'm going to be focusing on is not the differences, not the problems between you, but the similarities. Now, I only talk about myself in my own home. I only talk about three laws. Technically four. But the three laws are, they're the karmic laws. Okay, be true to yourself, do unto others as you desire them to do unto you, and energy out, energy in. Now, if you take a look at the different, at your own religious beliefs, at your own spiritual guidelines, take a look at your, at your doctrines. Okay, at the backbone of whatever religion, whatever following you have, and compare those laws to the three that I just listed. I have looked into a lot of them and I've got them documented. Okay, by no means have I even covered the majority of them. But, take a look yourself and compare your the laws you follow, the commandments, the guidelines, whatever you want to call it, to those three and see if they all fit. If they don't, Absolutely, drop me a line. You'll find a list of ways of contacting me at the on the list below the video. Okay, and any one of them, contact me on. I'll be more than happy to answer questions. More than happy to answer questions. More than happy to come on to to talk on. If you've got a show, I'm more than willing to come and talk to talk on it. If you, when you get to the point of actually having live venues, I do travel when I can. Finances always being a concern for pretty much everybody, I think. I heard it put one day by, an, he was nearly a millionaire. He had a very high six-figure balance in his bank account that I saw personally. And it was funny because he told me literally, he says, you know, a nickel is a nickel. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. It's still a nickel. So, let's take a look at the reality of life. If you're aiming at a spiritual, if you're claiming to be on a spiritual path, if that's what you're striving to do, ask yourself, are you treating the people around you the way you desire to be treated yourself? If they have a different opinion, are you talking down to them? Are you telling them they are not worthy of being in your, in your temple, in your, in your group, in your gathering? Are you telling and making them feel less? And if so, why? Now, I myself have a Christian background. Okay. 
I did grow up in the church, and therefore a lot of the terminology that I learned was based on that, so you'll just have to bear with it. I did, because of my own differences, I did back away from it. Okay, as a matter of fact, I quit going altogether. What? 40 years ago now. Because the church, in my eyes, failed me directly. Well, in all fairness, in my eyes, it failed the whole family. But, I encourage you to continue going to wherever you find fellowship. That is the purpose of gathering with people of like mind, so you can feel supported. And I don't care how strong a person seems to be. Well, actually, I do care, but it really is irrelevant how strong somebody seems to be. Everybody has their own fears, their own demons, their own weaknesses. Okay, I've seen people... Like, I've walked down in the in the park amongst the teenagers that everybody looks at and goes, oh, they're all hooligans, etc. Like, not everybody, but a lot of people. I got talking to a lot of them, and most of these kids are simply looking for an ear. They're looking for some semblance of normalcy around them. So they turn to the kids their own age. The same as successful business people gather with with successful business people. And we've got a whole other venue there. But when you're dealing with people, are you talking to them as equals? Or are you talking down to them to make them feel either deliberately make them feel worse or make them feel worse so somewhere in the back of your head you can feel a little better? Okay, I heard it, it was absolutely priceless one day. I was sitting I was sitting down having coffee with a chap on the, that was he was homeless and had been for a while. I was working full time. I just got to work early. So I was sitting outside with him. And we were we were sitting there talking. And another homeless guy came and he seemed a little out of place. But he plants himself down beside us. And he starts complaining about, oh, my life is so miserable. I used to have a nice house. I had a job. I had a family. Now I've lost everything. I'm sitting, you know, I've lost my job. I've lost my, my family. My wife left me. She took my kids. I lost my house. I'm living on the street in a cardboard box. And the guy sitting beside me that had been on the street for years, his eyes popped open. He sits up. He looks over at the guy and he goes, you got a cardboard box? And, I mean, it hit me right there. There, It's just amazing how some people look at life. Okay, now, I've had my own challenges. I've had my own, everybody's had their own. Okay, I could go into a whole list of them. But the one thing I found is I talk to everybody the same way. I will change my speech pattern once I am certain they aren't getting it. And the reason I say that is because I talk to kids, as in your little five-year-olds, with the same language I'm talking to you now. If they get it, great. If they don't, if I say something that they don't understand, I tell them right off. Ask if you don't understand. Okay, to give you an example of something that is on the extreme side, I made a comment to somebody one day, and the comment was very simply, well, once you understand the oscillant densification of the tritransmutational equilarity, it's quite easy to understand. That person had to ask for understanding of what that was. Now, the person that had to ask had their master's in rocketry and astrophysics. Okay. So, I speak to people the same way. Okay. But I have a wide array, and if you listen to my videos, you'll find I've got quite an array of different things that I look at. But ask yourself this, the path you're on, spiritually speaking right now, whether it's mainstream religion, whether it's spirituality, whether it's so-called New Age, which by the way is a major misnomer, so-called New Age is very old. The Wiccan religion, the Vodun religion, uh, religion are both ancient practices, not new. Okay, whatever you're following, ask yourself this. Are you treating people the way you desire to be treated? Are you respecting people? That's what people desire. On the whole, they desire respect. They desire to be treated like people, not looked down on because of where they are. Do you know anybody that's been fired? 
Probably. Anybody that's been fired, most of the time, they will look at it and go, oh, I did something absolutely terrible. Right? And most people that look at and that find people that have been fired, they go, well, you screwed up really badly for them to fire you. Now, there is the, the other side of that where they get where people go, well, the corporations are the problem. You know, they fire people because they don't care. That's actually incorrect. Okay. When we're talking about the spiritual world, are you dealing with people as equals? Are you dealing with them as they are? Or are you dealing with them as you think they should be? Because understand, what works for you may not work for them. Okay, this is why there are so many different religions. This is why societies have grown up in different fashions. Because in order for things to work, now they made a mistake in, in my opinion, they made a mistake centuries back when they separated state from spirituality. Okay, because if the state has no spirituality, it will not understand the people. All laws have to be unilaterally equal. They must apply to everybody, regardless of what stay of what their station in life is, or their income bracket, or their orientation. You know, from the from the Christian side, it is said very simply: God loves all His children. Now, do I believe in God? Absolutely. However, I do not fear Him. Okay, I do not worship him. I turn to him for guidance. And I'll use the term him very loosely. Okay, and we can get into that on another day. Or if you've got questions, absolutely ask. I will be doing this again. When you're looking at your spiritual path, is it guiding you to deal with all people equally? Is it dealing with, is it encouraging you to treat everybody with respect. Okay. Is the spiritual leader that you are following, are they living their path? Or are they telling you something really bizarre? And this has always confused me. There are a number of people that claim to be extreme spiritual leaders coming from the past. Okay. And they, they, they pawn it off really nicely. And yes, I deliberately use the term pawn. Because I hear about these people, and they have their retreats way out in the middle of nowhere. Okay, they usually have them fenced off or walled off in some fashion. More often than not, they got guns. And they say, you know, you don't need the material world. Give us all, give our church all of the, all of the money. Well, if you don't need the chair the money, why do they? But let me ask you this. Can you buy your way into what you call the after the afterlife in any form? Will any amount of money help you get there or help you deal with it when you're over there? Because I'll tell you, been there, done that, they don't take money with them. Okay, it's it's just got it's a, it's a great barter system. But the nice part about money is this. When you're looking at money, like I got told one day by a chap, he literally told me, I would have invited you to my church if you had been dressed better. Well, sorry, this is what I wear. And as I told him, and I'll tell you people the same thing, if the place you go dictates that you have to dress a certain fashion, I mean, I certainly encourage you to dress, okay, but if it, if it says you must dress in a certain fashion or they look down on you, you may have a problem. Okay, because God doesn't care what you dress well, dress like. He really doesn't care. So like I told this chap, he goes, you know, if you were dressed better, I looked at myself, tell you what. When God tells me that I'm dressing in a poor fashion, I'll listen. When I start paying attention to what somebody else tells me I should dress like, I'll probably check myself into a nut house to find out what went off kilter. Because as long as I'm dressed and as long as I'm treating people decently, does it really matter what my clothes look like? I mean, granted, it, it is best if you can have clean clothes, if you can have neat clothes. Sorry, I got wrinkles. Welcome to my life. You know, as I told my own son, 
I don't care what he dresses like. I really don't. I encourage him to dress well. But the reality is how he treats people is far more important. Okay, I was I was dealing with a chap in lineup one day in a uh, in a grocery line, and everybody was looking at him really really poorly. And, I mean, he was dressed. He, granted, definitely not my style. Lots of piercings, lots of tattoos, and he was dressed in leather. Okay, not my style at all. Okay, first of all, I don't want. I love the artwork in piercings. I love the artwork in tattoos. Wouldn't do it to myself at all. But like I told, like I told him, I looked at him. Everybody was looking at him really poorly. And I looked at him and I says, "Did you do the work yourself?" And he goes, "The piercings." I says, "No, that would be fascinating." Uh, no, I was thinking the the leather work, right? And he goes, "Yeah, I says, nice job." And he immediately relaxed, and we got into a short conversation. The people around me that that saw me do this reacted very oddly. They all of a sudden looked away from the guy and they started paying attention to, you know, magazines on the rack. All I did was compliment the guy on the artwork he had done after I had ascertained it was him that had done it. He was just a normal person. It was just, that's what he liked to wear. You know, he wasn't on shift. He wasn't working in a place. And obviously, if you're working in a place where, where a uniform is necessary, Obviously, follow it. You know, follow the dress code. On your own time, I will tell you, people will judge you the way you dress. They absolutely will. They will judge you the way that you carry yourself and the way you talk about your spirituality. Especially if you're talking to people and telling them that your, your belief structure is better than theirs. Now, that is true to the point that your belief structure is better for you. And as I've told people, if somebody comes to me with a belief structure that works better than the one I've got, I will be more than happy to entertain it. Thus far, that has never happened. Okay. Now, take a look at the way you're treating the people around you. Okay. Okay. Are, when you walk away from them, are they happy to have seen you or are they happy that you left? Okay, I usually joke about, I joke about it to people. I make everybody happy. Some by arriving, most of them by going. Which bracket do you fall into? That would be the critical factor. Okay, and much more importantly, really, is how do you feel about the way you've treated the person that you were talking to? Are you content with it? Are you, and if so, if you're completely happy with it, absolutely be content. Okay, carry on. If there's something about it, okay, if there's something about your behavior that you personally are not happy with, that you would not appreciate somebody talking to you like, then do something about finding a way to change it. Okay, simply put, I have one heck of a temper problem where it comes to dealing with stupidity. Now, I don't like this about myself, okay? I do not like losing control. I still do it, and I will still tell you it's a bad road. Okay. I heard it put one day that the definition of sinning is going against your own belief structure. Okay. Because, let us remember, you know, there's a lot of people who say, I don't believe in God at all. But most of them on their deathbed will still start looking to God. Will start, will still start looking to something and by some name. It's not necessarily God they turn to. They turn to all kinds of different names. You know, the All Mother, the Great Mother, the you know, the Thunderbird, Allah, Buddha. It doesn't matter. There's so many different names. You know, many will turn to Gaia. Okay, these are all labels. They're all referring to the same person or same entity, take your pick. And yes, there are those of you that will argue that point. Coughing, nothing serious. Well, it depends. There are people that will tell you this is bad for you. I'll tell you, I go through over 30 cups a day, and I'm still breathing. Mind you, I'm an oddity. Anyway, when, you, when you're looking at your spiritual path, 
Okay, are you treating people the way you personally desire to be treated? Can you proudly stand up and say, yeah, I was talking to the person about that. Yeah, we discussed that. Or are you going to have to look in the mirror and go, gee, I shouldn't have talked to him like that. And, you know, he had a point. And I, I just didn't want to tell him. Okay, deception, especially self-deception, is a problem for most people. Okay, I'm not deluding myself in telling myself in in looking in the mirror and going, I have complications. I know full well I do. Okay, this said, am I doing my best to alter the way I'm feeling and the way that I'm living my life? You bet. Okay, net result, aside from major, what I call major hiccups, as in screaming at people, because yes, I have a temper, sorry, goes with the territory. In all fairness, the best spiritual leaders on the planet in history had a temper. And just, just point blank, because I know the story, those of you that follow the Christian faith, understand that was not a good mood that Christ was in when he flipped over the tables in the temple. Okay, that's not a, that is not an example of self-composure. And it was not well thought out. But, he still led a staggering number of people down a much better path. Okay, and I'm here to tell you, if you treat people decently, you will get along with them a lot better, and subsequently you'll feel better about yourself. When you can look in the mirror and go, that's me, I'm content with the road I'm going down. Not, I'm perfect, I have yet to meet a soul that is, at, well, that's not true. Um... I have yet to meet, <coughs> sorry about that, um, I have yet to meet a corporeal entity that is perfect. Okay, I've met a lot that have striven to be, a lot that are really on a good path, and there's a lot of you out there that are absolutely brilliant. Okay, and it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from. Politicians, the frontline, you know, caregivers, the frontline, like the police, the fire department, ambulance drivers, you know, your first responders, your common housewife, the day, daycare workers, your grocery clerks, okay, fast food restaurant workers, you're all of equal value. Every one of you, and you all deserve to be treated with respect by everybody. Okay. The reality of, of spirituality is do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Okay, be nice. I know that's a weird word, especially in today's world full of hatred and fear and what have you, but be nice. Okay, now I do encourage people, I'm going to, my, my goal right now is to have this venue walking into walking forward Sundays I am going to be doing this whenever I get up in the morning right now it's really haphazard so I'm hoping to get that organized but it doesn't matter to me what your background how you got to where you are is not a concern the fact that you are where you are the fact that you are looking for a way to make your life better from a spiritual standpoint, that is the road that that I'm aiming at going down. Now I have fought the whole idea of being on the of being in the spotlight for decades. But at this point, I'm starting to move forward, getting things organized. It's gonna take some time. I am not perfect. But absolutely give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and at the bottom of the of the video. You'll find a whole list of ways to contact me. When you've got questions, I will do my best to answer them. Okay, either directly or in another video, depending on how many of what question I get. Now, I will do my best. There is no way in all likelihood as time goes on, I'll be able to deal with everybody. Because in case you hadn't noticed, I am not perfect and I do not have that much time in a day. I got this funny other thing going on called life. But I am going to do my best. So for the time being, I'm going to call this off. 
I will talk to you again next week. Okay. Doesn't matter what brought you to this point. Doesn't matter what religious doctrine you follow at this point or what spiritual guideline. Join me again next week. Okay. Next Sunday. And I pick Sunday because, well, it works for me. Anyway. I'm going to let you go. Until we talk again, take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.